Welcome to my house. So one of the most requested comments that we get by far is everybody's been wanting to see a tour of my house. My wife and I spent so much time building and crafting this thing over the course of two and a half years and we want to show it to you guys. We're going to start simple with the first floor powder room. See we built this house to be able to cater to people and to create kind of a sense of community and to be able to host a bunch of people. So we did two powder rooms on the first floor. This is one of the two. And now we're going to head into my office where I spend one to two hours each day working on the various business that I'm own or that I'm a part of. I am an owner at Fitment Industries, custom offsets for those of you just watching, some Pet Supplies Plus stores, and I have other investments elsewhere in real estate and other stuff like that. This is, this is the chair where I make it all happen, y'all. My wife and I just finished this house just about maybe 15 months ago, so we're still in the process of decorating it, but the vast majority of the house is up and ready to go. I am a big Disney fan. We love going to Disney World 10 to 12 times a year. Yes, you heard that. Um, still kind of working on this wall. I actually set this up for a laser tag system that I'll show you guys. We have a commercial grade laser tag system um, that will invite the neighbors and friends to come and play. Boom, boom, boom. Records are just a vibe. I love classic music like Neck and Cole. We got some Woodstock, 1969, and then some new stuff like the Harry Styles album. Um, wide, wide variety of music, y'all. My kids built the Titanic. I love having my kids close to me and, and in my old house, they would always wander into the office anyway. So I built them little desks and we're always kind of in here together. It's, it's really a good time having them all kind of together with me. There's a little Bugatti chest, y'all. We keep that close. No, it's actually together. Stored snacks in there for a little while. By the way, my good friend Rob built this amazing river table, and um, you can go find that stuff at Robert Russell Designs. We'll put the link in the description, but very awesome craftsmanship from him. Move on to the dining room. What I want to point out is you're going to see a bunch of windows and open space. The first phrase I ever said when I was a kid, it was turn on lights. I like a lot of light, especially natural light coming into my home. Um, so we have a ton of windows. It's almost like a glass fishbowl in here, but that's okay. Here's my dining room. It's a little bit seasonal right now. Another, another table built by Rob right here. This thing is heavy. It smells delicious. I noticed it smelled like cinnamon when I moved it in. Don't know how that happened. And you'll also notice that the hardwood floor is very light, warm, and welcoming. My wife and I are all about bright colors and just a warm, welcoming feeling. We really wanted to, just hitting in on that point again, we really wanted to build this home where it would be, especially as my kids get into high school, somewhere where they want to bring their friends, somewhere they want to hang out, like a safe place for everybody. And you'll see a little bit later in the video how we've built some really awesome stuff to, to make the house just all about entertaining. Moving on, we're going to go into the butler's pantry right here. This house actually has three different bar spaces in it, despite the fact that I don't drink. Believe it or not, I've actually never had alcohol. But we, uh, again, built the house to entertain, so that's what we do. I think I have 15 different refrigerators, too. We're going to do a little count along the way of all the refrigerators I have to verify that number. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> three refrigerators alone in the butler's pantry. Just wait till we get to the kitchen next, y'all. But yeah, this is kind of an area that when we, when we do big parties, um, we'll hire a bartender and he will sit right here and they will make drinks for a long line of people. Uh, we, we host this amazing Halloween party every year and we'll, we'll throw some um, pictures of that, but you can kind of see how we transition this home. And again, how we just really love taking care of people and giving people a good time. Refrigerator, 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 refrigerator. I said 15, it might be closer to 10, but that's still a decent amount of refrigerators. We built a big kitchen and this kitchen was built for basically someone that really knows how to cook. And that someone that knows how to cook is my wife. My wife is a wonderful cook. She's making dinner for us in just a little bit. This is really tailored around the way that she wanted it. And she is very effective by using this. We've got the huge griddle. Be able to whip up some, uh, it still smells like bacon. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That smells so good. I love bacon. Tons of storage. I mean, every one of these drawers is full too. You can pick any random drawer, you name it. Pots and pans, bowls, mmm, pans, yummy. A friend once recommended to us that two dishwashers are what saved his marriage. He kind of said one clean, one dirty, um, so that even when one's done and it's clean, you'll have somewhere else to put your dirty dishes. So we've had in the last few homes, two dishwashers. Also convenient, multiple garbage cans. Garbage can there. Garbage can over there. That's how we do it here at the Hamilton house. Let's move on to the family room. I spend a lot of time here watching football games, watching TV, kids doing their homework. Um, I'll even sit out here on my laptop quite often. Just a really comfy, uh, really comfy room that gives us an awesome view. We have just about two acres of land, which is unheard of out here. Um, we were very blessed and fortunate to be able to find this lot and build this home. Look at the view out there. It's absolutely wonderful. We'll, we'll show you a little bit better picture of the pool a little bit later. As we get outside, you'll see that we do have some neighbors that are pretty close to us. And I'm not a guy that likes a house just out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I like to be part of community and to be just kind of tucked within some neighbors and some friends. So 
Um, always get comments on how the homes are built close to each other. That's just the way they do it out here. And the fireplace, I think we go through about two face cords of firewood each year. I love building a good fire. We have one, two, three, four fireplaces in this house. That's number one of the four. My wife and I had built a home about five years ago and it was the traditional white farmhouse. Those popped up everywhere. Everybody and their brother has one of those homes. So we wanted to really differentiate it this time. And so we did something even more kind of contemporary, but also still very comfortable. And we chose the very dark siding because it's just the opposite of the bright white farmhouse that everybody did. Hopefully this sets a trend or maybe not because uh, we still want to be unique and have a super cool home. But you can see that there's very like warm touches throughout the, the wood beams that aren't super old and rustic, but they're a little more contemporary. Lots of shiplap all over the home. My wife is a huge fan of shiplap. Lots of contrasting countertops, different color cabinets. Very, very homey. I love it. This is what we'll call like our little breakfast or dinner nook. This is where we will typically eat all of our meals. Right here, we have a bunch of chess pieces left over from a party that we just had. Um, but typically, we're all sitting right here enjoying a lovely dinner cooked by my lovely wife, Caroline. Moving, kind of cutting back through the kitchen into the butler's pantry. Um, this is where we keep the majority of our food storage and then some other kitchen utensils, mixers, stuff like that. Little microwave, boom. Uh, my wife will use this area to prep and get a lot of the stuff ready. And of course, to store one of my favorite drawers, boom. We still got some Girl Scout cookies left. Yeah. Ooh, look at that neat organization. Isn't that pretty? That's, man, look at that. Look at that. Costco chocolate milk. Some of my favorite stuff. We buy four boxes of this stuff at a time because I eat like a child. That's right. I sure do. Speaking of eating like a child, I just want to make sure that I'm clear to everybody that I didn't have anything like this when I was a kid. Um, I grew up with nothing. My family, four different kids sharing a two-bedroom apartment, moved from apartment to apartment, on welfare, we literally had nothing. So it's important to know that I worked very hard to earn all of this, and this certainly wasn't handed down for me. I mean, countless hours of work to be able to get where I'm at now, and I think it's important for people to hear that because they, they do make judgments about this. But we'll move on anyway. Here are all the lovely storage cabinets that my kids put their stuff in. I have three children, each of them have their own cabinet. Let's see who's the neatest. Logan, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess Logan, but we'll see. Jack, no, they're all pretty decent. And Ava. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Good job, kids. And then the second powder room really comes in handy for the parties because sometimes we'll have 50 to 70 plus people here. People gotta use the potty, you know? Oh yeah, and kind of hidden behind the door is the urinal. Isn't that great? Gotta have a urinal for the guys. Saves water and frankly, it's just more convenient, y'all. We'll touch quickly on the laundry room right here. We did a first and second full laundry room because we have a lot of pool towels and other stuff that will come down here and we'll get that washed. And then off. also it's nice to just have an overflow laundry when there's a lot of laundry that needs to be done, especially after we get from a, uh, back from a trip. Um, and then a little bit of court storage and other storage in here. And then of course the media center. This is where we'll plop down our phones, charge them. Most of our electronics are in here. My philosophy about this home is that everywhere should have a house, right? Every single item that I own should not really be out in the open because there's so much space in here that everything should always be put away, neatly organized. All right, let's move on to the basement. Monkeys reference, my wife likes the monkeys. We uh, created a downstairs guest suite, and of course you need to have a bathroom for the guest suite. Okay, this one's a little messy. So this is, this is actually, it's supposed to be the guest suite, like I just mentioned, but it's turned into a massage room slash kids toy mess area. So this is where the kids go and do their toys. Messy. As I mentioned, I'm not a drinker. I don't have anything against drinkers. My wife likes to enjoy a glass of wine here and there. So you can see our massive and extensive wine collection right here. It is a very nice showcase, and this is one of the few things that we did kind of for resale where someone typically buying a house of this caliber is gonna be someone that wants some type of wine storage area. And this is bar number two, folks. Yet another refrigerator. I think there's another one. Nope. Oh, dishwasher. I didn't even know we had that down here. I don't know if this counts as a refrigerator. This is for kegs, so probably not. I don't think we can count that. So this is my officially my second bar, keg. And then we have the family room of the basement. Don't actually spend a lot of time down here. The kids will occasionally play video games, but they're more into computer stuff like Minecraft, Roblox, not too many Xbox, uh, PlayStation 5 or anything like that. But if they were gonna do that, this is where it is. I also got my kids early on into like Nintendo, the original PlayStation, Super Nintendo. That was all they knew until they were like seven or eight years old um, because that's kind of what I grew up with and, and I wanted to make sure they experienced the old school games first. Um, but yes, nice, warm, welcoming. Um, the huge thing about me having a basement was I didn't want it to feel like a basement. I needed massive amount of lights that got into here again, turn on light, first uh, thing that I ever said. You can see these are huge window wells that allow a ton of light into the basement. And, uh, and again, I just didn't want to feel like I was walking down into a dungeon. I've dabbled in some musical instruments here and there. One thing that I stuck to a little bit more than others was my drum set. What, you want to, you, you want to hear me play? What, okay, all right, all right, say this. That's 
That's all I got, folks. Just joking. <laughs>
this room still smells like it was just built. Like when you walk into a home and it's brand new construction, because this room hasn't been used quite enough. We need some more guests. You wanna be a ghost at my house? Let us know, comment below. Another toilet seat open? That's okay. That's all right. Ah, oh, yeah, that's turned into storage. Okay, why not? Very nice. All right, one of my favorite rooms is coming up next. Maybe my favorite room outside of my garages, which we'll show you in a little bit. I just got the floor redone in my garage. It looks beautiful. And now we're gonna head to the sport court. Probably my favorite room in the entire house. Look at that sexy thing right there. Mmm. What a view. That was my first hypercar, y'all. My first hypercar ever. Forgive this, this gets a little messy. The kids must have just been in here playing. So this is a room where I bring friends, neighbors to come play basketball. We try to get in a game of basketball every single week. I love basketball. I'm a huge 90s Bulls fan, as you can see from all the Scottie Pippen, Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan banners, and then all the Bulls championships that they did. Um, just really love basketball, really love coming up here and doing dodgeball. I'll whip a ball at my kids full speed, get them out. They're out of commission. Good way to put them to sleep, I'm just kidding. And then this is actually above my garage. So we're in like a whole separate building from my house that we were just in through that walkway that kind of transitioned different buildings. So this one was built to be like my man cave. So of course you have the sport court, you have a little seating area, poker table. And then of course, another refrigerator y'all. And then we uh, have the, the bathroom for the boys, voila. And urinal number two. Again, this is built for the boys, so we need a urinal. We're gonna head down to the garage now. Again, brand new metallic floor in there. Um, I used to store all of my cars here. This home was built to store 15 cars inside. Um, as many of our followers know, we have roughly, I have roughly 25 cars. Um, right now, about nine of them are in service, believe it or not. We still were able to get a lot of cars here. So we wanted to show you folks a quick view of the collection. And we thought that this Pagani right here, mm, look at this floor. We thought this floor would showcase the Pagani the best. So we threw that in here for you. And I just got my Pagani back a few days ago. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Matrix Coating Solutions in West Chicago, Illinois. They did my floor at a very reasonable price. The cheapest one I could find actually, and the job that they did is top-notch caliber. I've had a lot of floors done, and this is probably my favorite floor that I've ever had done. Good job, Matrix, thank you. Pool garage. Oh, dear God, that is the pool garage. We're gonna take the long walk out through the front. I'll show you some of the cars that I've got. I'll just kind of briefly introduce them. They're all important to me, but if you guys want to really see the in-depth uh, tour that we did, uh, click on the link in the description. It's going to show the tour collection and we'll also put a link right here, right here. Mm. Um, just click on that link. This is my McLaren Senna, the very first hypercar that I ever bought. It was previously owned by Dead Mouse. We have heavily tuned and modified it so it's a lot louder and faster. This is my Ferrari LaFerrari, the newest hypercar add to the collection. We did a matte black PPF in this and this is a fast but squirrely car. Natalia will be able to confirm that because she took this thing sideways today. Uh, and then of course we have the, the daily drivers. Now I wanna be clear that we drive these cars all of the time. We put tons of miles on all the cars, but these are like the kid haulers, the family haulers, um, that where I can't go take a hypercar to go drop my kids off at school. Ah yes, and the laser tag system, here it is. It's buried by, by some of the kid stuff and scooters, but check out my commercial laser tag system. It's better than any other laser tag system that I've played that where you go to an area and you use them. Like these are really good, fun, and I can, I can literally shoot people from like 10 houses away. So we got the Escalade that I just picked up. The Rolls-Royce owned by Tristan Thompson, the NBA player, and he would ha haul the Kardashians in there. He actually took that from one baby mama hospital to the other baby mama hospital, that very same car. My favorite car of the entire collection, my one of one PTS, gray black Porsche 918 with the guards red accents. Very contrasting colors, but I love that car. It is such a blast to drive. We have the world famous CO2 truck. The custom offset truck that has a whole series built around it on YouTube. And of course, some of our Archon wheels. These are wheels that we design and manufacture. Beautiful design there, the Archon Lincoln. My wife's Jeep ring, the Rubicon 392 that we supercharged. The supercharge didn't really add much horsepower to it. I'm a little disappointed. We only got like 40 extra horsepower, but that thing will, will pop a little teeny tiny baby girl, pop a wheelie. You know what I'm saying? And this is my oldest car in the collection. Also the one I've had the longest. Maybe this is the one that started the whole thing. If you don't know about the Hamilton collection, by the way, we are a collection that's privately owned by me and we're all about sharing the collection with the community. So we take these vehicles, we let people drive them, sit in them. Um, everything that we do actually, uh, my wife and I, all the income that we make from the Hamilton collection, we personally donate it to charity. So this channel is not all about being a profit monger by any means. We are about taking care of the community, making sure that we are involved in the community and making sure that we give back. Um, but this thing has a 496 big block, really powerful, awesome car that I've had forever and I absolutely love. In fact, I drove it here today. Um, old Smokey. The Ferrari 488 GTB, this thing has downpipes and exhaust, it is tuned, and I think it has the most tasteful wheels in the entire collection, um, with a Vorsteiner aero piece and body kit, very clean car. You don't want to get the undershot of the front aero piece though, it is damaged beyond recognition. Um, 
My favorite supercar of the collection, and by supercar, we're gonna call it under $300,000. Uh, this is the Porsche GT3 RS. I think I put 13,000 miles on this. It is one of the loudest cars in the collection and just a, just a blast to drive. Taking a little uh, trip back into the 80s, my 1987 Countach LP5000. Totally rebuilt engine. Very clean, fun car to drive. Gotta be in the mood to drive it because the AC doesn't work so well and it's really hard to shift and blah, 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 but just a really great vibe car. My 2006 Ford GT, the second to last one to run off the production line and just a really clean spec. Um, you'll notice a lot of these vehicles do have aftermarket wheels on them. Of course, being an owner at Fitment Industries, CustomOffsets.com and some other wheel companies, that's, that's my job. Speaking of which, these are some tasteful ass wheels that Rohana did for us. And, uh, and this is my 765 LT, just a blast to drive. It's a Spider. I think this is the car that changed my opinion on Spiders because it was one of the first that I, eh, maybe it was the Corvette. RIP C8, you know what I'm saying? And my brand, my newest uh, addition to the entire collection is my 1989 Lincoln Town Car Limo. I have an 83 Cadillac uh, Fleetwood Limo that's in the shop right now getting an LS swap done. And like, I am all about, you know, I've kind of changed my collection dy dynamic to vibe cars, really special supercars like the 765 and then hypercars. These, I just love, like there's something about driving an old limo. Maybe it's that I didn't get to experience this stuff as a kid. I don't know what it is, but there's something about the experience of driving that that I love. We're gonna take the back way around to the pool in the backyard. This is the kind of the remainder of our, of our backyard and we'll get to the pool in just a sec, but built my kids a little zip line with little uh, standing stations there. They don't use it nearly enough, but that's okay. We need to tweak it a little bit, make it a little bit better. This is where you can see that the, the basketball court and the garage are very separate buildings from the rest of the house. Bar number three, the sunken bar that seats right up to the pool, probably the least used bar. Really the only bar that we use is the one upstairs that I showed you guys near the kitchen. Um, but I'm not a huge pool guy. My wife and kids are like water fiends. They love going in the pool and getting good use out of this. Um, I do like the hot tub. Come on, who doesn't like a hot tub, right? Fire pit outside. I'll show you guys the screen porch. If the sport court's my favorite area, I think the screen porch is my second favorite area in the whole house. We did a electric retractable cover so we can just push a button. Covers the whole pool up. It's nice and safe when it snows or in the winter and you can't tell that there's a pool here. It, it's actually strong enough to hold people and not let them sink in there. This is a little courtyard right outside my office and that first walkway that I took you guys through. I don't know that everybody's ever sat in that area. <laughs> We've already been through almost a full face court of firewood this year. Oh, the outdoor projector. Stand by, this is a new ad. Whoa, it's like a sail. <laughs> Something just exploded off of that. It's a really windy day and I put out basically a sail. Let's put that back up. I can turn all the lights on and off in this house with the push of a button, pretty cool. And then I can also access all the blinds up and down, most of the blinds, with the push of a button, raise and lower the blinds when it gets too sunny. And what a great job the pool cover is doing right now, preventing the pool from getting leaves in it, right? Good job, Steve. High five. Fireplace number four. Did we, we already got to the three, right? Living room, master, basement. All right, this might actually be my favorite area. I think I actually lied. So in a good like autumn or early winter day or early spring when it's, we'll call it 45 to 65 degrees, this is like the ultimate chill spot. We didn't want to build it with actual walls because then it's just another room in the house. So we built these retractable screens. And so you can feel the wind, you can feel the elements, but it blocks all the bugs. And there's a fireplace out here, which I just love throwing a good fire up, putting the football game out of here, sitting on my $200 electric recliner chair that surprisingly my wife didn't really fight me about. I'm like, something about me just wants like a recliner. I don't know, but yeah, so plugged it. Nice little hidden plug there for my, rec my electric recliner. And then we'll have a dinner out here on days that it's, that it's relatively nice. And in Chicago, there are not a lot of those days that are super nice. Oh yeah, of course the, the built-in grill. I'm not big on grilling. My boy Jeff with the G um, helped me learn how to smoke my food. So I'm getting a little bit into smoking pork and such, maybe some beef brisket. And so that's, that's decent. That was the grill area. looks like my kids just got home from school. I wanted to show you a cool feature, but first I wanted to thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out this little button right here. Boom, and voila. And click on that notification button, folks. Thank you.